today we will be discussing the mind-blowing EUM, end-user monitoring. So we are going to start with 15-20 um, minutes uh, demo and then we'll spend um, uh, the rest like 10 plus minutes on, on Q&A. Um, just so you know, you should be all muted uh, at the moment and um, if you have any questions, uh, please do type them in the um, in the chat channel, please. Um, so let me start with um, with the demo. I hope that you can all see my screen. If you cannot, please um, type something on the on the chat. Uh, my plan for the demo today, is in the next. 15, 20 minutes, is just to do a, a very quick uh, high-level overview of Instana, um, just in case you are not familiar with with, uh, with Instana. Then I will do a quick deep dive uh, of um, end-user monitoring, EUM capability within Instana. And then I'm going to explain you know, a number of um, key functionalities, right, uh, like um, automatic correlation with uh, backend traces, but also smart alerting. Right, which is one of the new additions to, to our portfolio. So let me start just um, uh, with a quick introduction to the Instana solution. So what is Instana? It's, it's an application performance monitoring solution, which means that we will be able to, by deploying one single agent, we are going to be able to collect infrastructure metrics, um, but also application metrics. Right, and anything that's in between, right? So things like Kubernetes, uh, Pivotal Cloud Foundry, all these metrics about um, infrastructure and application and things between those uh, will be collected and will be uh, presented here in this area, right? And all these obviously is the, the back end um, side of our the application that we are monitoring. Um, but what about front end? Well, that's what we are going to cover today, right? And that is going to be on this view on the websites. Okay. Keep in mind, this is going to be uh, end user monitoring or real user monitoring, as it's also known in the in the industry. Um, so it's not just to, to clarify, it is not a, a synthetic monitoring solution. Okay. Now, um, from there, um, we also obviously do um, analytics when it comes to traces. So we collect 100% of the traces and they will be stored um, in here and you can filter and analyze all the all the traces in here in this, in this area. And last but not least, obviously we don't like uh, to have our users or customers um, staring at dashboards all day long. And that's why by applying machine learning and created knowledge, we will trigger a number of events based on predefined um, or out of the box um, rules or thresholds and that those will be presented here and obviously you can send alerts and notifications um, using multiple um, channels like um, email, Slack, Ops Genie, PagerDuty, uh, VictorOps, Prometheus uh, alerting channels and so forth. Okay, so this all you can find within Instana is all in one single pane of glass and um, it's not obviously on this menu looks like um, they are independent views or perspectives but it's not, it's all correlated inside of it. Now, uh, let me jump into websites. Okay, keep in mind, we are going to focus on the um, on the front end. Okay, so here we have one website. The name is RoboShop, and we can quickly see the, you know, some some uh, information about the the usage, right? So we see in the last hour, and we could obviously change that. Um, we could go into the last six hours, how many page views from real users, right? Um, and also the on the on load time, right? And we can see that is little above three seconds. Now, if we click on the on this RoboShop page, what do we get? Well, very high level information, okay? So that is in the summary, and we have uh, page loads, tr page transitions, that is specifically for single page applications, but 
then is obviously about how long it takes to load that page, right? Um, so here we see some performance metrics. First, the mean, but uh, we obviously work a lot with percentiles, right? So we can see the 90th percentile, 95th percentile. So what's happening to the 5% um, slowest users, right? Um, all this information that you can see and across the, the entire demo, it can be filtered, okay? So you can see, okay, you know what? I'm only interested to see what happens in the UK, right? Well, we'll see a subset of the page loads. And maybe from there, you just are interested uh, to see what happens on uh, Windows 10, right? Because imagine that there were um, some users using that specific operating system and you want to to have a look at their experience, right? And here you have, you go. You have exactly those um, uh, those metrics for the specific users. Um, you can clear filters, and maybe you want to see for a specific group of users, right? Or for a specific environment as well. So membership, or maybe you want to see the environment uh, or membership, like things like a, a platinum, gold. Um, members right so you can select the gold members and then you will see only those gold members that have loaded some of the the pages of your RoboShop website okay so that is how the um the analytics work or the the filtering works uh from here obviously we get all these page loads um, over time, all these uh, JavaScript errors over time. We see also some nice dashboards about where the users are connecting from, okay? And where we are experiencing some slowness. Um, speed uh, goes more into the details, right? Uh, so in here we will see correlation of um, some of the metrics will go into the navigation timing as is uh, uh, explained by the W3C consortium. We can see exactly where um, we are experiencing some um, performance degradation. Is it on the rendering time? Is it on the network? Is it on the security encryption? Um, or maybe establishing a TCP connection, right? Pain time, right? So important metric when it comes to um, user experience, we can also show that over time. Um, if you have uh, third party objects, right? Or you are downloading content from um, other um, origins, you can see that in here, right? You will see like um, different CDNs, advertisement companies, um, social network, all these, um, you know, other objects that you are loading to your website, you can also see their impact into the performance of your website. So that's pretty critical. Probably you've seen, um, you know, if you are using uh, LinkedIn or Facebook, uh, all these social networks usually um, impact um, considerably your website uh, page loads. Um, so definitely something that you want to keep an eye. Now, uh, most of the um, websites today, uh, they have asynchronous calls. And obviously I'm, I'm, I'm referring to Ajax calls. Um, so that is something that we give you visibility. It's not only about uh, loading the page, but it's also about what happens afterwards, right? when you don't uh, load completely the page, but you still are making some calls and showing some content. Um, so that is also something that we can see in HTTP requests. If you are having any JS errors, you will see them in here and you can analyze them. Um, a bit of uh, um, uh, performance distribution uh, across the, uh, the globe. And uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna cover alerts, because I'm going to spend some time later, but pages, obviously, you can split all the metrics uh, per uh, pages that you might have um, on your on your on your website. So this is just a, a quick um, overview on 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 EUM. Um, something that some of the features uh, there are a couple of features I want to show you is first of all um, the backend correlation. So if we go into analyze page loads. In here, we'll see the 20, almost 20 
5,000 page loads in the last six hours for our RoboShop application. If we go into, if we pick one randomly, what do we see? Well, we can see that um, that user, okay, um, which, by the way, all this uh, user information needs to be enabled manually. Okay, it's not something that Instana will collect automatically. Um, but we'll see using the IP, we can see where uh, th they are connecting from. We can collect also client information like browser and an operating system. And from there, we can see exactly for that page load uh, the waterfall, right? And, and, and here, obviously, I'm going into the tech details of every single page load. Uh, we can see how long CSS files took to load, uh, JavaScripts, images, uh, the DOM file, also how long it took. Uh, we can see also some uh, font files, how long it took to load that. And we could potentially go into the details about where was the time spent? Is it uh, on the SSL encryption? Um, also, we can have visibility into the size of that file, where it was downloaded, the window location, URI, things like that. And if you have any meta information, you can also identify that. And as I show you before, you can also filter using the metadata. Now, that, that, that is great. It's a very, you know, is a good detailed um, view on, on a page, on a single page load. But um, one of the things where, uh, you know, a lot of uh, uh, DevOps teams will spend time is about correlating um, bad user experience with um, performance degradation on the back end, right? Because it's very tricky to know, okay, um, for a user to load specific website or page, it's, uh, it's taking too long, but what is the exact database call or uh, intermediate call in the, you know, between all the different services that might slow down the user experience, right? How to do that, how to correlate that. I mean, if you're using logs, uh, log files, that is gonna be, uh, you know, time consuming and, and, and bit of a hassle, right? So let me show you how easy it is to do that with Instana. Basically, um, automatically Instana is able to correlate, to connect a page load with um, the backend trace, using the trace ID uh, in the backend, which means that by clicking on this little green button, uh, we can, it's automatically Instana is gonna take us to the backend trace. So first of all, it's going to show again all this user information. And then we scroll down. Instead of getting the waterfall, we get the backend trace. What does that mean? Uh, we have a trace with nine different calls on my backend. And I can see in blue, I will see the HTTP calls. I get all the details about you know what, um, if I click on one of these, um, I can go and see exactly um, the parameters of the HTTP uh, call uh, status code. We can even see the stack trace. And, you know, if you are a developer, I'm sure you want to see what is the code that has been executed. In terms of performance, you can see that on a, this gun chart or, or waterfall as well. But you can also have a couple of other uh, views. So you can use this list or you can use the um, more of a tree view. Okay, and here you can analyze how long each of the calls took. So that is pretty, um, you know, fast and easy to to do that correlation with the backend. Now, the the other, um, sorry, the other functionality that I wanted to show you, which was recently released, is the um, smart alerting. Uh, what does that mean? Oh, you know, what has changed because Instana has had an uh, alerting system since the very beginning, right? Um, now, we recently changed the way we do alerting and we're trying to make it a lot more user-friendly. And um, I'm gonna show you how well. First of all, uh, at the moment it's only available for um, EUM, so for websites, uh, but it's gonna be ex exported or, or uh, expanded into other areas of the product. Now, when you click on create um, um, an alert, right? And by the way, this kind of democratizing the, the alerting system to all the users and, and roles. Um, first of all, it's like a wizard, if you will. So what do we have? We need to select what type of alert. 
um, the scope of the alert and uh, the channel that you want to send that alert. What types of um, um, alerts do we have? Well, with the first release, we have three types of uh, alerts. We can alert on the JS errors, okay? So like um, server failure, right? Um, or maybe you want to select a specific error message, um, um, uh, JavaScript error message, and then you have that in here. Um, or you can select a slowness, right? That is going to be the most common one. Um, it's just whenever page loads or user experience is being slow, then uh, you can send an alert or you can, you know, if there is any 500 or 403 uh, for access um, failure, then you can alert on that as well. Now, if I, I'm going to pick just a slowness, um, um, randomly and I'm going to show you also the next one which is um, the scope the scope basically you can define here okay I want to um, to send an alert whenever there is a bad performance or a slowness uh, in the UK right and maybe just for um, for the production environment, right? That concerns me. So that is definitely something that you can do in here. You select production and then you will have that. So that is um, scoping out your specific alert. So that is easy because it's very similar to how I show you before. So it's very easy to then click next, select what alert in channel, right? Uh, Slack, for instance, and uh, there you go. You can, you have your, um, your alert created. That is, you know, pretty easy. In a few steps, everyone um, should be uh, able to um, to generate those those alerts. And just um, um, one thing that I want to show you in the advanced mode, which I feel, in my opinion, is, is quite uh, interesting, is first of all uh, the baseline. So you can create daily and weekly seasonalities. So instead of uh, setting the alert. Um, 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 uh, more like a static threshold, like you can see here, you can generate like dynamic thresholds. That is pretty awesome and works quite well. And uh, last but not least, you can also decide, uh, okay, uh, instead of bombarding me with alerts, I just want to, to get uh, alerted when we have a number of violations in the last uh, time window, or maybe only if uh, a number of users uh, were impacted. That's a way to reduce, uh, you know, being bombarded with lots of uh, lots of alerts.